Not enough nonsense in your life. Need a little more. More? Well, get ready, because these two have it in spades. Yes, I do. Loose talk. What are you talking about? Nonsense. Even looser opinions. Is it fine? And you're along for the ride. Everybody strap in. This is The Burble with Benny and Az. Berberlites. My name is Benny. My name is Az. We are here to basically trawl through the nonsense once again that the internet or the world or wherever we can find it basically spits out. And, uh, well, as this week, a lot of it has come from Australia. We've had some, oh, my goodness, a whole bunch of stuff happening in Australia. It's gone down, oh, really, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Downhill. Australia's lost its collective fucking mind. We've got uh, protests, earthquakes, uh, you name it. It's all there. So if you want uh, sex, violence, horror, all of that kind of stuff, we have it here on The Burble, including a US bride as this week. She's left a husband for her cousin, who is her ex-boyfriend, on her wedding day. Nice. That's what's happened. True love. Queensland police have launched a campaign to stop idiots ringing triple zero with calls that are non-essential. Now, this is something that we've got, we've got a little bit of audio that we're going to play here this evening from Queensland police, stopping people ringing triple zero with apps Absolute nonsense. You're going to want to hear this, okay? Now, of course, we're going to talk about the, the Melbourne earthquake, but one of the most interesting things that happened on the, uh, the the morning of the Melbourne earthquake is that ABC News Breakfast was live on the air, and I've actually got the audio of the two presenters in the studio as it was happening. One wanted to get the hell out of there. He was like, no, nah, let's get out of here. Let's go. Uh, and there was a little bit of foul language. That also happened as well. As Not on the ABC. On the ABC, on the auntie. I'm telling you right now. Uh, we've had a, a story suggestion sent in by one of our uh, stoic verbal listeners. Uh, she wants us to go to the emergency room, which we're going to do. Yeah, we're going to do that. Um, a, about a young man who once again decided to test the limits of his penis. Uh, that is coming up. Uh, also as well, you've come uh, to the table with, uh, well, what I can only describe as some classy uh, content. <laughs> Bringing a class to the burble, we have the story of an alleged pizza pooper, but we'll get into that and heaps more. On the burble. Loose talk, even looser opinions. The Burble. Never will I believe ever, ever, ever that there would be a totally inebriated groom at a wedding. Now, I've been to weddings and the grooms who I know very well, who I've seen very inebriated at some points as, um, mm. have never been on the inebriated side of things when it comes to their wedding day. Because, let's face it, the days have been, you know, duct taped to a telegraph pole naked in the middle of your town or wherever you're having the wedding. That sort of gets frowned upon now because you're not afraid of your mate who is the groom you know, swinging haymakers after he's been released from the police station <laughs> 30 minutes before he's got to get married to his lovely bride. That never happens anymore. In fact, no. you're afraid more of the bride and the and the bride's maids for ruining her and their day. No way are you worried about your mate because it's just another tale around the bar that you're going to tell and you'll laugh about it going, hey, you were all fucked up with dodges and bloody bowls. You were freezing hypothermia on your toes and dick, and then you had half an hour to get to the bloody wedding. That doesn't happen anymore. It's not the 80s, and we're not sporting mullets. You know what I mean? Mm. But listen to this. A totally inebriated groom was swiftly dumped by his new bride after their vows, leaving him for her ex as. Okay, so that's not so unusual. What's what's the catch here? The ex was her cousin. Nice. The ex was nice. her cousin. And yeah. all of this was all caught on TLC's Gypsy Brides USA. Would you like oh, to? Oh, the Gypsy Brides. These guys go crazy for a wedding. Gypsy they are Brides. absolutely off chat. They absolutely are. So here's the audio of what happened. He's maggot, and they're up to the cake bit, and then she decides, nah, nah. fuck ya. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. She just smacked a pu- like a cupcake into his face. No, I didn't. I've won out of this fucking dress. I'm done. 
<laughs> no. No, she's marching off. She's right. got like icing, and she, she's trying to undo the dress in the festival hall. I'm so mad right now. I went out of this dress. Sam, you're on my wedding. Like, I just don't. I don't even want to look at him right now. I just want to leave. Dude, she looks like a rat. Like she's like the sister of <laughs> Splinter. <laughs> now they're going into a room where she's sitting there. Yep. Is this is this the cousin? Now she's out of the full dress. I think it is. He's coming in for the tune. They're fo- but they're following him with cameras. You can't say bye. Yeah. Watch this all happen to you. This is ridiculous. He's a fool. You married a fool. You're supposed to be a, a gypsy, right? You're supposed to know. You're supposed to see all this coming. I mean, everybody warned you of this. Now look and see. Uh-huh. All these just emotions, like, just, like, arise. Oh, my God. She couldn't have her ears any more forward pinned. What do you say? Let's go. Let's go. What? Next thing you know is we're, like, running out of these doors together. That's her cousin. (laughs) And then the little flower girl's running behind. (laughs) And then he makes out with her in the car park. It's not super uncommon for the Romanis to marry their cousins and stuff, actually. It's. It's a thing. Look, I know that happens still. in the States all the time and all that kind of thing, but come in the on. the UK as well. The travellers. In the UK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is That's where they mainly come from, like the Romanies and the travellers in the UK or the Pikeys, if you want to be offensive. But, um, but brah. Yeah, but you could see the cousin. He was there. He was like, he was he was soaring like an eagle. <laughs> he was. Going, He's like. I was oh, like, woo, I'm, I'm coming in. Do you know what I mean? He's like, nabbed her. He's off. He's seen the heaving bosom. Like I, I don't know if the viewers could see any of the uh, the video, but she had um she had a waterfall of titties coming over the top of her dress. It was <laughs> just remember Brynette Austin when she married that old dude for his money, and she like basically had two pasties on as a wedding dress, and her tits were everywhere. Do you know? Well, I saw Bryn Ellison recently on SAS Australia, and she was the first. To really? F- yeah, she was on it. She was. Oh the my f- god! She was the first to fuck off out of the whole show. She was gone. That's surprising. I think she had to hold a sandbag above her head, and she couldn't do it. So I don't know how she holds those tits up. But anyway, <laughs> anyway. Now this worries me because like if because I'm getting married next year, right? Okay, you're going to be part of the service, and no yes. taping to the telegraph poles will be coming from you, if uh, <laughs> David the gnome. Anyway, so <laughs> the the thing is, I, I'm not, I, I, I'm just going to plan forward, and I know that none of my cousins will be there to swoop in in case I'm just on the inebriation. <laughs> I might have a couple of quite chardonnays the night before before yeah. we retire after playing backgammon or something like that. Yeah. It it's got to be all for the show, yeah. Because you a lot of it, I think. Because you just don't run off and go. You know what? We grew up as friends because your cousins and stuff, but. Mm, yeah, I made a mistake with old mate. He's a piss head, but let me go and fuck my cousin. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, didn't, didn't you say it was her ex? So she's been there before. Yeah, her ex, who is also her cousin. So we're not talking about a wart that gets removed from your toe, like cousin twice removed. I'm talking about the actual cousin. Like this is your mother or your father's uh. brother or sister's <laughs> child that you grew uh, up with. Gold. I'm sorry, that's just Fucking wrong. Yeah, it's not quite right. But I think, like we were saying, the cousin chose his moment. He took the chance. He rolled the dice and he got a six. He went straight for it, didn't he? He was like, oh, yeah, your new husband's a drunk idiot. Come suck my dick. (laughs) And she's gone, yeah, rad. All right, let's go. Well, where are you in life, though, when you've made those choices? You're like, "Um, this is, I'm in my wedding dress. We're at the hall. We're at the reception. (laughs) We were doing the cake part. I've gotten the shits, I've dumped the whole other part of the dress in a separate room, and then you're sitting around with your bridesmaids and maybe some of the flower girls, and then your cousin walks in and says what you just said. Come and suck my dick. And then, they, no, run, and then they run out into the car park, fucking end of show, roll credits, his old mate covered in purple icing at the end. Well, and then she's covered in something at the end, not purple icing. This is The Burble with Benny and Az.
As have you ever had to call triple zero? A couple of times in my life, yeah. A couple of times in your life. And we all knew, especially around our age, is that you do not call triple zero unless it's a life-threatening emergency. Now, when we were younger, I've got it on good authority that say if you were mucking around at a phone box, all that kind of thing, and then you rang the police and said, yeah, come, yeah, come, they were going to come. And child justice, as it was back then, they were going to hit you over the head with a telephone directory. Yeah, you get a clip in the ear for being a dickhead. Well, you would probably not be surprised that a lot of Australians are actual dickheads because... (laughs) No. Yeah, oh, yeah. Australians are being kept in life and death situations for far longer than necessary because others are calling triple zero asking for stupid shit like directions and recipes, and can they bring them food? I'm not kidding you. Yeah. Queensland, okay, they've launched a new campaign, which happened uh, earlier in the week, aimed at stopping people from calling the emergency hotline for non-urgent matters. Now, get this, as I want to do some stats here for a second because this is interesting. Of more than the 700,000 calls made between September last year and August this year, only 13% or just... 100,000 were classified as urgent or very urgent. Now, just put that into your mind there for a second. They're the kind of calls that they're receiving in Queensland in regards to triple zero. Audio's been released, and let's face it, we like audio on this program, okay? (laughs) Revealed one man had called triple zero, hoping police would bring him a flake and some chips, whilst another woman called to complain about her neighbours. And another one calls up to say, I don't have any credit. Now, she was trying to contact another arm of police. Let me just play this audio so you understand right. exactly what I'm talking about. Check this out. Here it is. Your police emergency, where do you require the police? I'm at Sunshine Beach. It's um, just down from Noosa in Queensland. Yeah, where, whereabouts at Sunshine Beach, sir? Where the car park is. Okay, where that, um, to, Yeah, but I'm um, to the left of the, at the end of the steps. Okay, there's a number of car parks out at Sunshine, but you're talking near the surf club where the renovations are going on? Yeah, at the bend. Yeah, the bend. So you're just at the north. Now, you can hear the coppers trying to work out exactly where this bloke is, right? Yeah. Sweeping left hand bend of that little car park there at the top of the stairs? Yeah, um, I need a flake, minimum chips, and. Police emergency, what's the address of your emergency, please? We're we're down at Kingston Station, and so someone's playing UC on the train. Yeah, Kingston Station and Railway Station, and there's someone playing yeah. music on the train. Kingston Sweetie, there's someone playing music. Right, so what's your emergency? <laughs> Someone's playing music on the train, and I can't handle it. Well, that's not an emergency for police to attend to. <laughs> okay. I suggest you just move car- carriages. Okay. Oh, snap. Police emergency, what address do you require the police? Uh, it's not an emergency, it's um, my neighbour playing music and singing at the top of their lungs while I'm trying to sleep. Alright, I'll give you the phone number for police link, that's for routine matters, it's 131. Um, I don't have any credit, Let me do I have any credit for it? Yeah, hi. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't have any credit to ring him. The people next door parties all night last night to early hours this morning and they're doing the game now. The music is so loud, the boom bass, and we all have to go to work at school tomorrow. All right, there you go. There's some audio there. Now, that story yep. coming from uh, news.com.au. Thank you very much for the audio. But, however, though, they are inundated, inundated with, with stupid... With dickheads. With, with dickheads. Yeah. Exactly right. They're inundated with stupid... Uh, questions, demands, all that kind of thing. The article goes on to further say as that they they even get phone calls from people wanting lifts home. So they go out on the piss and then they obviously lose their wallet, lose their friends, lose their money, lose their phone. All that lose kind their of- dignity. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and then they have the hide, the actual bloody hide, to call police to say, can I have a lift home? Lift straight to the cells. Well, dry out for 24 hours. See, they can't do that, though, as. That's the problem. They like, should be able to. Because Give them back their old hitting sticks. They are trunching. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what? We do we do laugh about that kind of thing. However, though, we can't actually confirm that that actually happened. Because no, of course I, not. I never got phone booked. Did you get phone booked? I never got hit with a phone book, no. No. 
So we can't confirm that that actually happened as kids, you know what I mean? But yeah. it, like, the other thing is- I well, clip around the ear a few times, though. By police? Mostly police. <laughs> do you remember, now this is, this is going way back there, but do you remember when like police had come and talked 